the creative interpretation of these things is sure. uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is always amazing. <laughs> always amazing, I think. Yeah. Um, so the territory we're in yeah. is it's not light. Yeah. It's a different spectrum altogether from electromagnetic radiation. It's more to do with feeling the vibrations of space-time rather than seeing light waves traveling through space. Yeah. Um, but because space-time is unbelievably stiff, it's really hard to measure those vibrations because space-time hardly vibrates at all unless yeah. you get really violent things like black holes colliding. And the trouble is, black holes colliding, they're usually pretty far away. Well, maybe that's a good thing. You don't want them <laughs> colliding in your backyard. Yeah. And that means as the waves spread out, by the time they reach us, they're even fainter. Mm. So that's why it took us so long to develop the technology capable of detecting these tiny ripples. What what sort of order of magnitude are you are you? We're trying at? to detect changes in the curvature of space time in our patch of the universe, yeah. equivalent to a million millionth the width of one of your hairs. A oh, wow! A oh, wow! That's, that's about a thousandth the diameter of a proton. <laughs> that's that's what we're trying to detect. That's crazy! Wow! Yeah! Yeah! Wow, man! Okay, um, and so in terms of before, we, before I start asking about the the actual experiment um, side of things, mm -hmm. um, in terms of, so I guess, so it's a confirmation of Einstein's general relativity. Is that where, is that kind of where you're going? That, that's, yes, excellent point. I, I would say that, it, you know, what we've always tried to stress is that that wasn't the only reason why we did it. I mean, testing Einstein's theory is important, sure, but just like with other areas of astronomy, like gamma rays to radio, like, like you said, um, you know, we've got into the business of doing research in gamma ray astronomy because we can use that to tell us about what's going on out there. So, yeah. you know, we want to use gravitational waves like that. We don't just want to use it to test Einstein's theory, but we want to use it to find out about black holes yeah, neutron okay. stars, yeah, galaxies, yeah. you know, yeah, the whole yeah. lot. So it was never kind of about, um, oh, well, we've proved Einstein was right. That's it. We can go and do something else now. It was about opening this new window in the universe and then seeing what we find. Um, okay, wicked. Uh, and so in terms of what the picture looked like, maybe the beginning of the universe, mm -hmm. um, do you have any... Is there any kind of like, you know, like with the cosmic background radiation sure. stuff? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a it, it lets us know kind of the past yeah. bit. Do you have a similar kind of? Um... Yes, we do, and it, that's a great question. Um, in a couple of quite um, distinct ways. So the first is directly analogous to that cosmic background radiation, and um, we believe, according to um, inflation theory, which is the, the, the most widely accepted um, description of what was going on just immediately after the Big Bang. Yeah. Inflation is believed to have been a period of very rapid expansion of the universe yeah. that made the geometry of our universe look to us flat. So it sort of explains why the universe looks so flat today. I mean, we're not talking flat Earth here. That's yeah. a whole other story. <laughs> but, um, but the geometry of the universe being close to flat yeah. was a little bit of a puzzle because um, what it seemed to require, if it's, you know, if it's perfectly flat, that, that's sort of okay, it's always been flat, but if it was just close to flat now, then it would have had to be unbelievably close to flat in the early universe to, to sort of stay so close now. A good analogy for that that I've always liked is the idea of kind of balancing a pen on its end or a pencil. Yeah. That, you know, in principle, you can balance it perfectly on its point, and it will just kind of stay there, yeah, but yeah. you'd only have to disturb it a tiny amount and it would yeah, talk over. Yeah. yeah. So inflation proposes that the universe expanded incredibly fast in its earliest moments so that what we observe today is actually only a tiny part of the whole universe. And therefore, we shouldn't be surprised that our local patch looks flat in the same way as, you know, yeah, the Earth is round, but yeah. locally it looks flat because you're not seeing the big picture. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if the universe is flat and inflation drove it towards that flatness, then we think there should have been um, lots of gravitational waves produced during 
that inflationary phase. We call them primordial gravitational waves. Yeah. And there should be a background of those, just like the cosmic background radiation. Now, the catch is, it's pretty hard for LIGO to see that. And the reason is, all of that was happening like, you know, tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang, so like 13.8 billion years ago or so. And if those gravitational waves were produced then, we think they were, but they will have been stretched, expanded by the, the red shift, the expansion of the universe, just like light has been stretched yeah. by the expansion of the universe. So LIGO is good at detecting gravitational waves with much shorter wavelengths than that, but it's pretty hard for LIGO to detect primordial gravitational waves that have been subsequently stretched in that way. So actually, the best way to detect the primordial gravitational wave background is to use the cosmic background. Okay. Because the gravitational wave background will leave a kind of imprint on the cosmic background radiation. It will affect what we call the polarization of the cosmic background radiation, just a bit like with polarizing sunglasses. It refers yeah. to there being a particular kind of preferred direction in which things were you know, vibrating, things were um, uh, being perturbed. And just a year before we made our detection, there was a big announcement from an experiment at the South Pole called BICEP2 that was claiming to have detected this primordial gravitational wave background. But then a few months later, they had to say, ah, oh, sorry, guys, we maybe didn't. Because, you know, their data was all fine, but there was another way to explain the signal that they saw. It was just oh, like what? noise from our galaxy. Yeah. So that actually in some ways influenced how it all unfolded for our collaboration because it made us super cautious. When we made that detection in September 2015, yeah. we thought, yeah. oh, geez, we don't want to claim we've seen something and then have to retract it. Yeah. So we yeah. took even longer to double check and triple check and quadruple check everything. All of that said, the, the BICEP2 experiment that was measuring this polarization of the cosmic background radiation, you know, one of these days we will measure that as well. Okay. Um, it's a really hard measurement to make, but, you know, it's going to be done. So that will be another big gravitational wave discovery, but not of things like black holes colliding, but actually coming from the Big Bang itself, these primordial gravitational waves. Yeah. Okay. So we are trying to detect signals like that, but we always knew that that was going to be hard for LIGO to do because the wavelengths that we are sensitive to are generally shorter than the wavelengths that would correspond to those stretched waves from the Big Bang. 